Bet to CFO sold 30 of holdings. CMO Michelle Draper sold 28% of her holdings around this. They tweeted it. I retweeted this. They took it down. They obviously retweeting this. This was all over the place. They don't want people to see it. Just five, five days ago, you're uh, bragging about this. Definition of front running. Front running, uh, uh, let's just read the exact definition. Practice by market makers of dealing on advanced information provided by their brokers in investment analysis. Before the, we have a question, are you, if you were to look at this as a mark to market rather than a mark to maturity, where are you at here? Because our assessment is we're going to lower you two ratings levels, Pat, two. He said, what do we have to do? You have to clean this up. And part of the plan to clean it up exists. Almost fell. Almost fell. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Chris. This is Show Me Repair. Today we've got my 2013 F-150 in the shop and it's due for an oil change. I'm actually about 800 or so miles over on my oil change and I hate doing that. I hate, I mean that's close to a thousand miles over and with us testing the oil, every oil change, it's, I really don't want to do that. I want to keep the uh, testing uh, consistent and I hated that but I got in some pickles and I had to run around and I just didn't get a chance to get this thing in as quick as I wanted. So today we have several maintenance items and repair items on this truck actually. Uh, not just an oil change, not just a tire rotation, but I still have an oil leak on the passenger side of the engine. If you remember I had a video a while back about replacing the vacuum pump on this truck and those are known to leak oil while I replaced the vacuum pump. and. I still have an oil leak, so I'm suspecting maybe the valve cover gasket, something like that. So I got new valve cover gaskets just to um, take a look, and I'll probably change those out anyway. Um, I really didn't. I I know it's leaking from back by the vacuum pump. So is it something I messed up whenever I was replacing the vacuum pump? I don't know. We're gonna look into that. I know it is leaking from that area. It's running down the back of the. Uh, cylinder head between the valve cover and the uh, cylinder head and it's actually coming down and dripping down I can see signs of it um, on the back of the cylinder head on the transmission bell housing and below and you can even whenever you come to stops it the oil drips you can smell it burning so I definitely know I have a leak in that area 
So we have that to do. I need to do spark plugs and coil boots. And I need to do an oil sample. I feel like that's it. I may, if I get a chance, I've been wanting to install an external transmission oil filter. And if we have time, I will get to that. I don't believe this is gonna be a one day job. Uh, because it's all already late in the afternoon and doing those valve covers can take some time or us tackling that a little liquid. I don't know what it's going to be. So let's get to it. First thing we're going to do is pull the inner fender out and go after the vacuum pump to try to inspect that area and figure out what's going on. Yo, a Q's valve is better trade. What a lot of these Congress people, how are you worth $140 million on a $160,000 salary? Okay, that could be worth, uh, uh, insider trading. Dude, you're on the inside. You know exactly what's going on. The level of audacity to go up there and collect it and then come back of what they did. Just kind of want to give you a background of what they did. The CEO was the 2008. So to say they have a star-studded lineup of people with experience to make sure a company doesn't make the mistake that Lehman Brothers made or others made, they have it. And they still did this. Before we go into the question that I want to give you feedback on, you know, I want to talk about with the $250,000 I don't know if you guys can see. I'll take the camera off here in a second. It's definitely coming out back here. Above that. I don't know if it's coming out any higher. But I think I'm going to pull the vacuum pump off and see if we can see any signs. As long as it's been leaking, there should be some you know, caked on oil. And give us a good indication. We got oil that was dripping down this the upper coolant line and actually my coolant fittings on my turbos are leaking so I need to I have all the parts to do it but I've got some plans for these turbos so let's pull that vacuum pump off here's a closer look where you can see where that oil is underneath that vacuum pump you can see it's dripping on this shield right below here there's shadow on that, but you can see where it's leaking. Let's uh, see if we can get that pump out without uh, stripping bolts. That'd be really nice. One, two, and the third. Okay, well at least I didn't strip this time. Hey, one bolt. The closest bolt comes out by itself, but the other two have to come out with the pump. I'm not seeing anything here That makes me think that this was leaking. I mean, yeah, we have some oil down here, but I think that came out whenever uh, I pulled it off. Got a little clean spot here, but I don't have oil buildup in this area. It looks like it's been caking. So I think we'll keep digging and see what we can find. See what the I'll get a mirror and look at the back of that valve cover and see what we can find. I got a new gasket for this too. It really looks like it's just the uh, just the valve cover gasket leaking. You guys can see the back of the cylinder head there some. Um, let me a little higher. Where it's built up, most of the oil is built up is just below the vacuum pump. I think there's a looks like a 10 millimeter bolt below the vacuum pump hole built up there and on the valve cover but it could be leaking above it really doesn't look like it's been leaking above not see anything it could be that cap um, it's like a journal cap but it's for the back of the cylinder head for the valve cover to seal for that vacuum pump and it could be 
that has started leaking some. So when I go to do the valve cover gasket, I'll pull that off, reseal between the cap and the cylinder head uh, with some gasket maker. I'll show you what I, I use. What I don't know if Ford actually recommends any more, more. Sometimes they recommend silicone, but it's a gasket maker. I think they still sell it. And uh, we'll seal that up. So right now we're going to, I guess, go after the valve covers. We'll go after this one first, get it done. Didn't pick up the camera or record any of that. That way I'm not boring you guys with just time lapse and stuff. Um, first thing you want to go after, or you can, I mean, there's different things, but I always go after the wiring harnesses and everything, anything draping over that valve cover to get it out of the way. So we got our cam position sensors back here. We had a wiring tie on a stud back here. Um, I had different wires that were... Uh, had push pins into the valve cover. One's here, one's, one's here, uh, one's also here. And I don't have a trick for pulling those out without breaking them. I've just, I don't know why Ford, the holes and the push pin are such a tight tolerance that they always break. And plastic gets brittle with heat. So that's out of the way. Position the coil, uh, coil harness out of the way. Um, got the, VCT solenoids disconnected. There's a bracket down here. I don't think you can see it very much. It mounts to these two valve cover bolts. Get that out of the way. I like to just grab a pry bar of some kind and get underneath of it. These valve covers fit extremely tight. funny you get these valve cover bolts loose and they'll still fight you. I don't know if you can see it. You hear it creaking. I am going to get some silicone spray and spray it around those. The VCT and the coil boots. Pretty common for the way they come off. They come off hard. I'm gonna have to pull that out of the way. I think that's an eight. Eight's working. Yeah, I put the valve cover gasket. It broke in the pieces. I bet you it was just that valve cover gasket leaking back there. Overdue. Uh, yeah, it broke again. I'm still going to remove that cap, and I'll show you that here in a second. Plastic valve covers suck. If you look, there's a small crack between these two. I don't know. If, I'm having trouble seeing it myself now. There you can see it. Right there. Now I'm gonna put silicone there. Buy a new valve cover. <sighs> Junk.
this could have been the whole reason it was leaking. You can see oil underneath a little bit. It doesn't use an O-ring. You got to use gasket makers. So I'll clean all that up. Clean the old silicone off from the vacuum pump. I'm gonna use some Scotch Brite here to clean up the sealing surface for the vacuum pump. Clean up the top where the this cap comes on. Make sure it's the gasket maker is a good clean surface to seal to. Okay, I scraped away any dirt, anything like that, and I'm going back over it with the rag with brake clean on it. Because we still, I had to scrape away some uh, silicone up here by the front cover where it, front cover and the cylinder head meet. So you gotta prep that area for some silicone. Prep back here where the cap is also. The uh, I don't worry about it. The stuff we're gonna use for that gasket maker. You can see right underneath the motorcraft it says gasket maker. Let's find a part number here for everybody. I'm not seeing one. Anyway, it's a motorcraft. I don't have the box with me. It's, I just have this tube. It's a motorcraft gasket maker and if you need some just go to your local ford it's probably going to be 20 bucks or something but this little tube can last you years you don't whenever you use it use it pretty sparingly i'll show you okay this is that cam cap for the vacuum cap and we're only going to do it you don't have to use much Come on, come on, squeeze out. I don't want a lot to come out. There it is. You don't need much. Just like that. Oh, that was probably even a little too much there. I went the wrong way on that one. Just a second. Okay, it just wipes away. Let's do that again. We'll start out here. And that's it. When this stuff cures, it cures and gets really hard and I got to torque this to 71 foot-pounds then 45 degrees I think I'd said 71 foot-pounds I meant 71 inch-pounds and 45 degrees well my torque wrench kept kicking off on me so I don't think that was right Wipe off the excess, and then before I put the valve cover gasket on, I'm going to put some silicone on the corners of that cap. That way, it seals up with the valve cover gasket. And I think that's actually now. And I need to put some towards the front here and then we'll put the valve cover back on well I thought I was recording that but I wasn't so got the valve cover on a couple of these are fighting me because they came off when I was these bolts they came out whenever I was putting the new seals in okay now I'm going to do the spark plugs 
if I remember correctly, I'm on like, if you're counting the first ones that came new in this truck, I'm on my fourth set of spark plug. Not because I really have to, but I always found that on these turbocharged engines, it wears out spark plugs pretty quick. I change. I well, I was for the longest time trying to change them every twenty-five thousand. Probably a little excessive, but I found that almost every time I do it, I notice the idles better after I do the tune-up. Some long-winded spark plugs. I'm gonna measure the gap here in a second. The main thing I look after is uh, any carbon tracking along here. I don't see anything that jumps out at me. But normally a good carbon tracking, you can catch your fingernail with it along the porcelain. But then down here, that brown stuff, I personally believe that could be glue but I think it's compression that gets past here, at least over time. Because the, it's funny, you'll see spark plugs that have, uh, on trucks that have a misfire or something, that's super dark. And maybe it's just from carbon tracking, maybe it's the sparks finding a new home, but anyway. Okay, I got these spark plugs. It's supposed to be, the uh, gap is supposed to be 31 thousandths. I have them gapped to about 28, and then I add just a little bit of, uh, Oh, what is that? Antices to the threads, just a little bit. You don't want a lot because it can actually, if you just slobber it all on there, the antices can actually melt and go down in the cylinder and cause misfires. So we just want a little on there just to help. And then also I put new, put new boots on the end. Truck's shaking quite a bit. Of the coils that help seal at the spark plug porcelain. Make sure you don't get any misfires from uh, the spark finding another path. And then I always put dielectric grease down in there. I gotta tighten the spark plug first. Getting a little ahead of myself. Just snug them down. No reason to crank on those hard. Also put a little dielectric grease on the coil connectors. Just in time, it's something you're gonna have to take off again. You see from dealing with a headache, and it makes a good connection. That went in very easy. Very uneventful. Which is good. Usually the cam that lines up with the... Oh, crap. Okay. It was not eventful. Spoke too soon. I should have put... Son of a... You guys were probably watching me and going, does he have the bulbs on? No, I didn't. Why didn't you say something? I can't believe you guys let me do that. Okay. Let's put the bolts in this time. That will probably make it more difficult. I don't think I need all of them in, but we're going to put all of them in. Dealing with wheels that big, sometimes I regret lifting this thing. Since you're heavy. Okay, I went ahead and did the, let's see if I can do this without making a mess. So I went ahead and already did the valve cover on the driver's side. 
and the spark plugs on the driver's side. Knock that out. Put the wheels on. I need to torque the wheels. I'm gonna dump oil in it now. And then, uh, I think that's it. I think, well, I'm gonna look at the transmission lines on the front and see if there's a place I can mount that filter. I really don't have time. I really need to get this out of the shop and move on to the next job. It sucks that my stuff always gets pushed behind, but it is what it is. Don't have a big enough shop yet. I watched my last video before doing this oil change because I couldn't remember how much oil it took. I ordered eight quarts, so I'm pretty sure that's what it took. If anybody's interested in AMS oil, I'm a dealer, and I'll have my email in the description. And I'm working on a website where you can contact me there, and we can uh, I can get quotes. But uh, shoot me an email and let me know what oil you want, or let me know what vehicle you have and what engine, and I'll try to get uh, you a quote on the oil that you need. Here we're gonna start it. We're gonna start the truck here in a second, and uh, I'll get the mileage then what we're at. But I'm doing one last uh, check of the catch cans in. 5,800 miles that I went and I have uh, if you haven't seen check out a bunch of my shorts where I have uh, a bunch of updates where I calculate or I figure out how much I was getting out of the cash cans Woo. this one's completely full that's water and like a little oil mix I definitely need bigger cash cans. That one by itself is about five ounces, so that's about all that holds. I think we need to get bigger. I have plans on doing some, making some changes that I think might reduce the amount of uh, fluid that's caught in the cash cans. But it's just one of those things that I just need to buy the part. That one's full too. A lot of water. Just under 10 ounces. Wow. Okay, we're sitting at 125, 865. Go ahead and start it. Okay. Let it run just a little bit longer. Actually, now that I'm checking this, my oil level is just a little over full. And if I remember correctly, it was like seven and three quarters. So seven quarts and three quarters of a quart, or like 7.75. And I'm just a hair over. I'm not real worried about so I think we're gonna leave it there I'd rather have a little bit more oil than not enough I think this is the third time I've done this I'm trying to, I'm trying to make my videos better I don't know how well I need a new camera and a mic that'd be cool then I can film and do other stuff hey everybody I really appreciate you sticking around to the end uh, I'm gonna finish up this video uh, I will have a video tomorrow going over the oil sample and updating you on the oil leak, let you know how that went. So I'm going to end it here. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one.